Melanie Vieira is the uh, business development manager for Ball Corporation. Did I get that right? You sure did. Okay, terrific. So thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely. So tell us a little about Ball, what Ball does. I think people, some people have an idea what you guys do, but uh, why don't you tell yeah, us? Yeah, we are the largest manufacturer of aluminum beverage cans. We have customers of various sizes and all different types of beverage categories. That's pretty easy. Yeah, it's pretty easy. <laughs> so when I was talking to you about I, I, when I saw you at Next, it's interesting. You know, you see so many uh, new beverages in cans now, and it just used to be sort of the domain of carbonated soft yeah. drinks and beer. Um, but now it's just you know you're seeing it in coffee, you're seeing it in juice, you're seeing it in so many different categories. Um, you know, why is that, and where are you seeing the most growth in terms of uh, beverage categories? You know, it was really interesting. The craft beer movement was really what kind of initiated a lot of that change. Mm -hmm. They saw the functional benefits of the can being able to block UV light, able to um, manage the level of oxygen that was in the cans, the recyclability story, portability. And so it was clear to craft brewers that this was a, a superior package format. Yep. And once they started putting these premium products in the can, it really elevated the can package in a lot of different segments. And so once that happened, we started seeing a lot of um, movement in a lot of different areas. Certainly the energy drink category yep. really elevated cans as well. And so now we're starting to see a lot of interesting segments that we wouldn't have probably predicted early on. Wine and cans right, has become yeah. very popular. We're getting lots of phone calls, lots of energy excitement around that. Um, the cold brew coffee movement, mm -hmm. um, some of the new technologies that we've launched has really helped that. The, the widget, which helps to nitrogenate products. So, um, so tell us about that. Which products are using that widget right now? Yeah, so, um, so for those not familiar with the widget, it's actually our device is secured to the bottom of the can. Okay. And it... Um, when the can becomes nitrogenated, it stores it in that little little device. Yep. And then when you open the can, it nitrogenates the entire beverage. And so beer has certainly been um, really interested in that technology with yep. stouts. And now um, coffees. The coffee movement has really liked it because it gives that nice frothy head that you get right. in, in coffee cafes. Yeah. Um, you know, in terms of sizes of cans, you know, where are you seeing I mean, the standard 12 ounce has been something that's been used everywhere. Yes. Um, <laughs> But uh, where else can you? Where else can we see new innovation as it relates to the size of canned packages? Yeah, you know, a lot of the movement. Um, I would say in beers, 24 ounce and 16 ounce yep. have been extremely popular. They continue to grow at double digits. We're adding capacity to try to support that growth. Um, 8.4 ounce, kind of a small, slender yep. Red Bull size can. That's been really popular with. Um, kind of more of the functional drinks, the smaller, if it's more of a um, concentrated impact of, of flavor, mm -hmm. a lot of times the smaller cans, and then um, the 12 ounce sleek, which is 12 ounces, which is a really nice volume, yep. but it's a little bit thinner and, and modern yeah. and sexy. Sure. Um, what's interesting also about cans is you guys promote the recyclability of cans. Absolutely. Much more so than oh, over other packages. Um, but at the same time, do people were still are people recycling more? I mean, are you seeing that happen? Absolutely. Um, you know, I think as people become more environmentally conscious, recycling is one of those huge things that that people start to recognize. Yep. And aluminum still can continues to be the driver for you know supporting and funding all of the recycling. So we're very proud of that. It's infinitely recyclable. So a can will get recycled and returned to another can in 60 days. Mm -hmm. um, 60 plus amount of recycled material in every can and end. So yep. it's, it's a really great story and, and a lot of companies have really used that to help build their brand platform. Uh -huh. Now one of the knocks on cans that I heard from before uh, it was ubiquitous in beer was that it sort of changed the flavor of the beer. The li there wasn't a lining or there was a lining or whatever it was and people got over that pretty quickly. Well there is always a liner. Yeah, there's always <laughs> that should a be liner. clear. Okay. There's never problem touching the can. Um, you have to have some kind of barrier between product and can or otherwise the can is no longer shelf stable. It, right. would, it would start to corrode. Um, so every can has a liner and what we do is we have a flavor profile um, staff and what they do is they help our new customers to send in their beverages and then help understand if the coating does have scalping or if it affects the flavor and they'll help actually reformulate and give ideas for how to make sure that that product is exactly how you want your consumers to, to taste it in the end. That's really interesting. So let's say I'm a new entrepreneur and I'm saying, okay, you know, I'm considering can as a package. Um, you know, what's that process like? I mean, do you have minimums in terms of like orders and, you know, who are the people that you work with to kind of help those folks? Yeah, we do have, um, I mean, like any company, we have minimums and we have very, very large equipment yep. <laughs> and we run about 2,000 cans a minute. Wow. So it's critical that we have minimums that help us just maintain efficiencies yep. and quality and reduce scrap. You know, we're also environmentally conscious ourselves. Yep. Um, 
that's an area where we are, are doing a lot of investigation on how we can support the folks that are below our minimums yep. so that we can bring more people into cans because that's really important. We see a lot of new entrepreneurs that want to be in cans and sometimes those minimums can be difficult. Right. And so that's been a big movement within our organization to investigate how we can how we can service that category um, because we know they're going to get bigger and they're going to be in an ability to grow and we want them in cans. Yeah. And so that's been a lot of effort on our end to, to, to help move people and have a solution for that, that size category. Great, great. Well, uh, I really appreciate you being there here, uh, being here with us Absolutely. at the Lounge. And I hope you're having a really good conference. It's a fabulous conference. We're ah, so happy to be here. I like that. Here. It's a fabulous conference. <laughs> fabulous. You hear that, folks? All right. <laughs> Melanie, thanks so much. Great seeing you as always. Thank you. It's a pleasure. We'll see you soon. Okay.